Good morning, everyone. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, it's Christmas season, isn't it? <laughs> so we're thinking of that. So continuing this series, as we think of uh, this whole issue of being connected, uh, and as we draw towards Christmas, uh, you will see it come together. It will connect, all right? So we've, we've done a few weeks already. Today, I just want to talk about connected to grow, mature, and multiply. Um, as always, many a times, uh, things that we say, whether in teaching or in preaching, it can sound very simple. Sometimes we read the scripture, we, we just gloss over certain things. Often missing the truth of it and how it liberates us, how it frees us, how it empowers us. And, and today we look at our, the movies around us. Um, and there's a lot that's being offered, isn't it? Movies, uh, social media, whether it's all these short videos, TikTok, whatever. And certain cultures, you realize one thing. It always celebrates an individual and somehow it portrays this individualistic greatness more than community. We, we always gravitate, and we are having the season of uh, getting ready for elections, isn't it? And you see all these guys having these fierce poses, you know, I'm thinking, hey, go and get in life, you know. And then when they go to parliament, they can never represent the community well. But they always say, you know, I am going to make this difference. I am going to do this. We have a lot of I in our life, in our conversation, in society, a lot. And sometimes we have celebrity Christianity. It's also a lot of I. We celebrate a person or a band. And, and, that's the, and many a times there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect. We, we sometimes miss the greater truth of what God wants us to do. This whole individualistic attitude or spirit or lifestyles or portrayals cannot be farther than the truth of what God wants us to have. We look at the scriptures. We read through history of the Bible. We look at the New Testament. We look at the church history. You realize it's never an individual. Yes, God touches a heart, pushes. We always think we always want to be a Moses. We want to be a Daniel. But they would have never been effective without the people around them. Yes? Never. Nothing would have happened. But God starts with an individual, inspires them, but it's through the community that things begin to happen. We only thrive, we only grow, we only get better when we are first connected to God and then to each other. Everybody all right with that? If we miss that, we miss a lot. And God sets this amazing example for us. So I just have two thoughts this morning. Uh, my first thought is this. Our standard for unity, of unity, for unity. There is a standard, uh, well, the, the uh, dictionary would say this, uh, the meaning of standard. Something established by authority or by a custom or a general consent as a model, as an example, or a point of reference. It goes on, it says, something that is established by an authority as a rule for the measure of quantity, weight, extent, value, or quality. We all have models, isn't it? Yeah? So, so many a times there's a design, and then we want to model after a design, model after a, a you know, a home, uh, a, a song, or whatever it is, a standard. We always say, we use this word, the golden standard, isn't it? Uh, whether in, in service, whatever it is, we, we have this standard. What is God's standard for connecting with each other? We all have our own thoughts. Fair, everyone? We have our ideas, we have our opinions. But is that God's standard, or is it my opinion? And we will look at it. We'll see John 17. Many a times this is called Jesus' farewell prayer or the Jesus' disciples' prayer. Uh, interestingly, this is the only prayer, and this is his longest prayer. This is the only prayer in the Bible that only you and I can answer. 
He starts, he says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. I sanctify myself for them, so they also may be sanctified. Next, by the truth. I pray not only for these, but also those who will believe in me through their message. May they all be what, everyone? You sound very sad. May they all be? Now, last week we looked, the last two weeks we looked at this word quite a bit through Scripture and especially in Ephesians, right? May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be one in us. So the world may believe. Can I just pause there? It says, they may be one to do what specific thing here? This is the prayer of Jesus. What is he saying? He said, they may be one so that what will happen everybody? That the world may believe. What is so powerful of believers... I think we're a divided lot, aren't we? There are thousands of denominations. Everybody says they've got the truth. We, we all have funny sects and crazy things the way we do things. That they all, when they are one, so that the world, have we paused to think? And we think in John, he says, I give you a new commandment. That when you come together, paraphrase, that it will be a testimony to others that I exist. When a kid misbehaves and you see somebody, who is your father? <laughs> have we not done that before? <laughs> I mean, I have 2,000 people that I look after every day. So it's like, when something really goes wrong, teacher, can I see this kid's parents? Often what we do reflects where we grow. Come on, everybody, are you with me? What is so powerful about us learning to be one as it's demonstrated by God? How does it lend such a powerful testimony to the awareness that people see and say, there is a God that's alive? That the world may believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you have given me. May they be one as we are one. Very clear, he sets the standard. I am in them and you are in me. May they be made completely one. Then he says this again. So the world may know. Twice he repeats this. The world may know you have sent me and have loved them as you, has, as you have loved me. Now, it, it's so significant what Jesus is saying here, isn't it? Now, we use the name of Jesus. Today in worship, we, we use the name of Jesus. In prayer, we use the name of Jesus. In conversations, we use the name of Jesus. Do we not, everyone? But do you think many a times... Maybe it's true for me, yeah? And think about it for yourself and others. We use the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. We have conversations in the name of Jesus. We rebuke people in the name of Jesus. But could it be we actually ignore the word of Jesus? Could it be we actually ignore his word? Could it be that we devalue his truth, His name. Uh, tomorrow they want to do something with the, they want to present some issues on the refugees and uh, I was asked to write with a group of people a paper and of course we worked at it. I was actually very reluctant to put my name on it because not knowing how it will be used. because it's election season. I don't want something to be banded around 
for somebody to create mileage and my name is there. We represent the name of Jesus. We must make sure it's given the value and the honor it's supposed to have. And the first place it starts also is how you and I connect with each other. It's not over meal. Have you realized, I, I don't know how it is in other countries, but you realize in Malaysia we'll say, hey, have, let's have some, some, some fellowship. And the fellowship revolves only around one thing. Food. So many times, it's actually food, not the fellowship. We want the food. But think about it. Yeah, it's a bit sobering. I'm like, oh dear me, do we, we're getting this, this, this thing preached to us. I think it's so necessary because we, we have such a fractured world so disconnected with God. And this is the prayer that you and I answer, that they may know, that they may know, that they may know. So how, how do we then determine uh, the value and the legitimacy of our actions, our words, what happens? Well, it's obviously, I, the answer is there already, God's standard. What does it mean? Very simple. What does God expect me to do? How does He expect me to live? And then how does He expect me to have conversations? We often say uh, life is in the power of words, right? Right? But we only do it because we want to confess good things into our lives. But many a times, we are quite brutal with each other with our words, isn't it? We're quite brutal with people with words, aren't we? So, the individual person would say, and sometimes different, different cultures espouse this to so much, I think, I believe, I feel, I want, or it can go this way. My opinion is, the answer is absolutely no. What is God's standard? What is His desire? We cannot disregard God's truth. So, when, when we are able to put this together, uh, we, we, when we when we are living with it, and what we say, what we do, how... Now, would you not agree with me? The moment I think of God's standard, it immediately makes me aware of where I am, isn't it? Yeah, is that not fair? Yeah? If you look at, you, you want to compare quality, you look at something really good, and you take something that is inferior, all of a sudden, the value of each is so obvious, right? It's so obvious. You look at it and say, oh dear, that's right. So when we look at God's standard, it's not to intimidate us, it's not to discourage us, it's not to belittle us, but it's to say, you can achieve it. And when we achieve it together, we begin to answer that prayer. We begin to work it out. So when we do that, when we begin to live by that, we also, what do we tap? We tap into the very presence and the power of God. Let me give you a simple example. In the time of worship, this is just a simple example. If we all have our own idea of worship, that worship is quite flat and confusing, isn't it? But when all of us, you realize today, intentionally, the instruments played less. Did you realize that? Why? So that when we hear each other, we are encouraged. And as a community of people, for the audience of one, we are worshiping and adoring Him and lifting up His name. And there's a dynamic that takes place that goes beyond the physical and mental, isn't it? Something begins to work in our own hearts. Something that you and I cannot really explain. And that is what happens even when we connect together 
in worship, what more when we do other things? What more? And the Bible and history is laden with those examples. Laden with it. So, we allow his life to flow into us more fully. But let me, on the reverse, ask a question. What would keep God away from fully immersing in us, fully manifesting? What would keep God's power also then away from our lives? Well, I think when we look at Psalms 133, it kind of uh, gives us, it helps us out a bit. Of course, there are many more scriptures. How good and pleasant, two things, how good and pleasant it is when, it doesn't leave the sisters out, okay? Yeah. When brothers do what? Come on. When we do what? What is that living together? Is that working together? Is that iron sharpening iron? It, It is that working through issues. It is that coming together to get things done. Live together in harmony. You realize now all this also has an idea of a symphony. Have you all been to watch a orchestra play? Anyone? Amazing. Do you have you seen the back scene? How much effort goes into it? And I've and I've met some conductors. I man, for the life of me, their ears are so attuned. You there, you're out of tune, you're singing out of key. I'm like, there are 100 people. How do you know who is out of tune? You see, the only person who can hear that and tell us what we are out of tune is when we are connected to Christ, isn't it? Is that when we get His Word, isn't it? It begins to speak to us. As I said, sanctify them. My Word sanctifies them. It is the Word there that begins to work in our life. We can't do without that. We can't do without the Holy Spirit. We can't do without God. So think of it. And then when they play, my goodness, you see how intense they are? But they're all focused to bring one symphony out. And when they do it together, of course, the guy who's conducting it gets all the applause, isn't it? But who really worked hard, man? It's all those guys sweating away, thinking I want to keep my place here. It's an amazing, amazing work, isn't it? And the end part of this psalm, it's only three verses, says this. Can I have it? For there, where? In that harmony, in that symphony of life, of thoughts, of that connectivity, for there the Lord bestows, a different version says, commands His blessing, even life forevermore. Uh, Think of it. Uh, We cannot do life without God. Can we all agree on that? We we can't do life without God. Well, we can live life, but we can't do life, life without God. And without one another. That sounds like a bummer. Why? It always challenges the individualistic person who doesn't want accountability in her life or his life, who wants to live on their own, who wants to do their own thing, wants to say their own thing. I want to come church at my own demands. I want to do things in church. I want to live my life as a married person in the way I want it. I want to be a young person. Hey, parents, just give me the money, feed me, but don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me how to live. You see, this whole thing, you see how beautifully it pans out in society, in every part of our lives, when we understand that the golden standard that God gives us, when we begin to respond to it and work with one another, it actually brings the grace and the mercy and the blessings of God. It does. We can't. Matthew 18, uh, verse 19 says, again, Jesus is saying, I assure you, he says, I bet my life on it. Of course, he won't say, but you know, and he did give his life for it. If two, how many, everyone? Can you think of the denomination? He didn't say if 10 of you. He didn't say if 50 of you. He didn't say if 2,000 of you. How many, everyone? 
Just think of that. Sometimes just to get two people to seriously come together and believe that God can do things and that we can demonstrate something amazing of God. What more when all of us do it? When two of you agree on earth, on earth, about any matter that you pray for, for the right things. Lah, huh? The Tower of Babel is an ex- amazing ex- example of doing it reverse. But yet, what did God say? They wanted to build this, this whole tower reaching out to God. And God says, they have set their mind as one. There is nothing that they, will, that they have set their mind to do that they will not achieve. Why? Because even God recognized even though it was the wrong reason, they were determined as one to achieve that goal. That, no, that they pray for. It will be done for you by my Father in heaven. God's blessings come to in a greater degree when we unite by His standard. Now, we of course haven't seen it here. I don't know, some of you overseas, and I, and I was, uh, was uh, blessed enough to see it. Have you seen the geese flying? And it's a V formation, right? <laughs> yeah, so maybe you've seen uh, uh, videos on it, you've seen documentaries on it. Why not fly in a W shape? Why not fly S? S can you, no, that, that will be... Uh, unique thing, right? We, of course, when they study it scientifically, it's amazing. And I think when I read these scriptures and other scriptures, I said, wow, even creation, God speaks to us and say, if you do it the way I want you to do it, there is something that you can achieve beyond your imagination. It is said because the, the way they fly, the, 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 the geese that's right at the front, of course, is pushing through the air current, okay, and the wind and it's breaking it. And it says when the, the air stream that flows makes, let, allows the other geese to get into the stream and fly easier. Okay? No, no, please don't put that first. <coughs> fly easier. Okay? They have calculated that the geese fly farther and faster 71% when they do that formation. 71%, guys, not one, 71%. That means if they fly alone, they are able to do, le- they, they will only be able to do 71% less than if they came together and flew to that destination together. Wow, what an amazing thing. And this is what they do. The tired one will fall back and then the rest say, oh, I don't want to do it. Too bad, you're tired. See you, we'll join another group. No, they instinctively, the next one takes its place. And they continue. And the ones at the back actually are honking. It's not the honks that you hear, it's the way they sound. And the, 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 the documentary guy says, he says, as though they are saying to the one that leading, carry on, go for it, we are all here together. Keep that speed so we can reach our destination. Isn't encouragement something amazing, everybody? Isn't it? You know, I think of a a young man that came to our church long, 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 long ago. Uh, Brought by, by, I think, uh, uh, Norman or Kelvin, whoever has brought him in. And, And he was just a lost kid, kicked out of school, and wanted to do... uh, he wanted to go into the food thing, be a cook. I could only shape him that little bit. But then stepped in Adam, because I got him an internship in a very high-end place in KLCC. Now, every day he was scolded, he was cursed three generations back by the guy who was teaching him how to cook, and they do it. And they are ridiculous the way they do it. Today, He's a manager of one of the high-end Japanese restaurants in town. But you know, it is people like Adam and the youth leaders who pushed him, stood there with him, and said, we're going to see you through till you reach your end goal and your dream. 
And we have multiple stories all around, isn't it? When we do that together. I am convinced, and we all should be, God has the answer to conflict. Would you not agree with me? Thank you for that underwhelming response, everybody. Do you agree that God has the answer to conflict? I, I do. I believe that. I believe that God has an answer how to end war. Do you not? <laughs> okay. You want to honk positively? Okay. Do you believe that God has the answer for war? You do? Okay. I believe God has the answer to solve every marriage conflict. I, I believe that. And every teenage issue, God has the answer. But first, of course, we need to connect to Him, isn't it? And then embrace that standard and we live that out. I am convinced beyond a shadow of doubt. I'm convinced. All of us are recipients of that one way or the other. We must first connect to God. And then with each other. If not, if we don't, now you can put that on. You see, we all talk about this purpose, the large arrow. We all talk about going in that one direction. But we all could be pushing different opinions, right? Why? I don't want. I won't. No, not now. We all, and you realize, it always slows every other thing down. I believe the church would have made, the church should have impacted nations around the world. And yet, history encourages us to say it can be done again. Amen? Church, and that's you, you know. It's not the person preaching, you know. It's people all outside who call upon the name of God. But many a times, the church divides on politics. Rather than stand on principle, we stand on personality. And let me say this, and some of you will be unhappy. Shame on us. Because we use the name of God, but we disobey His standard and His truth. That's horrible. And we do that everywhere. When we have that very answer in our hands, when our marriages thrive, will not our neighbors have a good look at us? Come on, church. Will not our neighbors have a good look at us? In the right way, of course, not like, hmm, strange people. No. No. When we get that right, I wanted to write an article and I'm still contemplating and saying we all we are talking about we want people to to I posted uh, the TikTok thing today. So five of us did that under NECF for the whole evangelical church. I think mine comes out tomorrow, day after tomorrow. Our dream for Malaysia in this in this election. We can tell we want a non corrupt government, but we have corrupt Business people giving money to get projects. It's not a one-way street. It's two-way street. It takes both. Right? It takes both. If you don't feed it, it's going to starve and die. If we want to go in one direction, then it's all that direction not one going that way. Can you imagine the geese, one saying, it's all right, I want to do the backflip. <laughs> I'm going to do it the other. No, it doesn't work. Why? Because it's a standard that God gives us. He gives us that. And of course, the second one is, don't get hungry. I talked about it last week. You realize it's just one door, right? The same door. Yes, no? Yeah. Yeah. But it's got three parts. Of course, we can talk about the Trinity, how it comes together, and that standard God gives us. Different in function, in what they do, but what it is, who is the Trinity that comes together? 
We need the Holy Spirit. We need all. And imagine all of us coming together, one body, one spirit, one Lord, one Savior, one baptism, one spirit. It's not a different Holy Spirit. It's the same. And if we understand then His standard, it actually causes us to deal with the fluff and our own opinions better, isn't it? It helps us deal with these things. God's standard, not ours. And the second thought very quickly before we, we close in prayer. Fitted and knit together. Let's look at Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. <clears throat> and he personally gave some, you realize some, not all. I must tell you a funny story. People like to be apostles. I'm an apostle so and so. Okay, the standard in the Bible, I thought those guys were brutally murdered men. Are you ready? Okay, I don't think you're ready. These friends of mine had gone to this huge gathering. Uh, maybe I don't, shouldn't say the country. And they're all introducing themselves. I'm an apostle. I'm a prophet. So, and they give their names after that. And some of them, crazy enough, I'm archangel so and so. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding you. I, 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 I tell you, I'm not kidding you. Okay? I am not kidding you. Okay? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding you. Maybe I saved some of the other names on how they introduce themselves. This friend of mine just got so annoyed. He said, I'm just Johan. I'm just Johan. So he's just saying, I'm just Johan. And during the break, they came to him and says, Brother, we've never heard of this title, Just. What is it? <laughs> and he's like, I want to go home. <laughs> I, I want to go home. I don't want to. I don't want to be here. Some we will. He gave some to be. What has it got to do with what I want to say? Nothing. Okay. And he personally gave some, not all, to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers to do what? Everyone for the training of the. Who are the saints here? Some of you are like, am I a saint? Yeah. In this case, don't worry. So, so you, you, you get a title. So when you introduce yourself, say I'm saint so and so. Yeah, so you can do that. Okay. Uh, for the training of the? All right. In what? In the work of? To do what? You sound so sad, actually, guys. Come on. To, to, to what? To build up the body of Christ. Now, if we pause here, go back, please. Thank you. We're talking about God's standard, right? This is what we're supposed to do. Next, please. Until. God is also very sensible, isn't it? He knows we have to work at it until we all reach. Think of the reformation. Think of the destination. Hey, we have a destination that we are going to. Okay? And of course, we have an eventual destination. Fine. Reach the unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son. Growing into a mature man with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. Not any other person's fullness. Not some other standard. It's Christ's. Then we will no longer be little children. Tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness in the techniques of deceit. But speaking the truth in means we need to speak the truth. In speaking the truth in love, it's sometimes it's correcting people, isn't it? But we don't like it. Let us do what everyone? Grow in every way into Him who is the head, Christ. From Him the whole body, that's that word, fitted and knit together 
by every supporting ligament. Now, from saints, you are a ligament, okay? Supporting ligament promotes. What are we supposed to do when we do that? We're supposed to promote the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. Is that the end, verse 16? Wow. Now, that's quite challenging, isn't it? Now, you'll say, I don't want to listen to you. Fine. But let's listen to God's word. Remember, he sets the standard. It's not ours, it's his. And to get that fullness, it's also a striving and saying, God, Paul says, I press forward, I strain every muscle of mine. I'm like a runner, I'm an athlete. I've got that goal in mind, in sight, and I'm going to push forward. I'm going to get it. And when we have that mindset and heart, the dynamic changes. Everything changes. The key, the key expression for me is this again. Fit it and knit together. It involves work, isn't it? Work, dealing with rough edges. But one thing is clear. One thing is, can I, can I have that? One thing is clear. We all have responsibility to connect and to build. We all. No, no one is exempt. No one is exempt from it. And, and, and you will definitely agree with it, what I'm going to say next. As your pastor, I don't have, I'm not the fourth part of the Trinity. None of the pastors are. No matter who says they are apostles, prophets, whatever, nobody is the fourth part of the Trinity. It's an oxymoron. There's no four in Trinity, yeah? No matter how much we think we are gifted, we are never gifted to do everything. We have no capacity to do everything. And that's why God in his wisdom tells us how beautiful it is when brethren, how good and marvelous, how lovely it is when we come together in that harmony. And there I will command the blessing when two of you agree. Go therefore. When we think of all this, it's always done in community. We are checks and balances there. When we meet in the connect group, hey, Life is supposed to take place there. Life is exchanged there. Accountability takes place there. Growth takes place there. When wherever we are outside, we're saying, God, help us. Teach us. Show us. God, bring other people across my, my path. Lord, people that I, I want to connect to you. Hey, brother, sister, will you pray with me this week? I'm reaching out. We have going to have Christmas at home. We all need to think towards it. All of us working towards that goal to say, let's make it an amazing Christmas. When we take the three days to fast and pray, just don't pray when you are drinking a drink. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for this drink. And then you say, did you pray? Say, yeah, I prayed. Yeah. But when we come together, why? We, we want that one thing. We want people's lives to be touched. We, we want broken lives mended. We want people adrift to come and connect with can I hear an amen at least, everybody? So when we think of Christmas at home, hey, it's in your home. Open up your home. Invite people and say, this Christmas, I want to tell you of an amazing love that you don't want to miss. And next week after church, we're going to talk just generally, briefly, hey, how do I give a test Without fear. We connect together. We all have a responsibility to connect and to build. I'm not gifted, but I'm supposed to work on you as well. Yeah? Challenge you like this. Teach you whatever it is and say, come on, we've got to grow together, we've got to mature, we've got to multiply, we've got to do it. The body has a function, 
verse 12 says fitted and knit no no not verse 12 verse 12 says actually to, for the training and equipping so it carries the idea this is the idea it carries in the in the original language restoring something to its original condition or making something complete isn't that amazing as we study god's word as we get trained as we get equipped what does it do it wants to bring together god's standard god's desire god's purpose the way it should be so that we can be the salt and light wherever we are amen we can be salt and light you know as i end this i would like us to stand let me just say a few more things i want to stand together the whole the whole idea of training equipping perfecting is to prepare us for god's work sometimes we have this mindset god's work serving we we have our wires crossed in our heads we we somehow break up this walls of rejection hey will you serve no 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 i won't serve hey remember the vision hey sometimes the ones who are pushing and pushing do get tired you realize and when they want to fall back and they look back like no one nothing to fall back on that's very critical and we have it quite set for us god gives us his standard so we don't have to figure that out we we don't have to figure it out it's there for us we we have that standard we have that example we have that model and we have the scriptures guiding us inspiring us challenging us correcting us putting us on the path let me read my last uh, slide here next one last one what we are doing this is a question of course what are we doing with the gifts and the abilities god has given us there's not one of you that doesn't have an ability everybody has, has giftings and abilities is that not right everyone yes no all of us but what are we doing with it is it just reserved for for what i do outside We need to mature. We need to grow. God expects his children to live by to live sorry not love live by his standards. He expects us. And that is a challenge. Now, I missed uh one scripture. Can I can I have Hebrews 10? I want to close it Hebrews 10 please. Uh verse 24 and 25. It says here and let us be concerned about one another will you look around uh, i know there are a lot of them who are not here today and our bahasa group is up there as well don't look at me lah look, look, look around just, just let us be concerned about one another can we carry that in our hearts for one another why to promote love and good works don't discourage others to do honor the lord and serve the lord give to the lord sacrifice to do that good works not staying away from our worship meetings some of us say i'm going to watch from home hey that excuse and only go so far unless you're ill hey you know you're tested positive for covid uh you know you're really ill you're connecting with us online you're far away fine but you have the ability to do it i i think that's just just a, a, a sad discouraging excuse as some habitually do but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day drawing near i think every day we live we are one day closer to the lord's return amen we are one day closer to the lord's return with that view let's say lord i want to stay connected to you i want to be connected to each other lord i want to encourage others I want to build others lord and together see others get restored by your love and your presence amen god has given us his holy spirit he's not given us nothing no one he's given us his holy spirit he's given us one another to be able to achieve the standards and demonstrate 
Can we take this next last few minutes here together? Will you have a conversation with God? Surrender your own heart to God. I want to fall into formation. I want to be there for others. Lord, I want to build together. I want to be fitted and knit together. Lord, I want to be an encourager. Lord, this season, Lord, give me the strength. Let me overcome all these different mindsets that I have to connect with others, to connect with church. And do one thing, Lord, to connect those who are far away from you to you. Let's take a few moments. desire to honor you. Lord, the, the truth is, I don't think any one of us in our hearts want to dishonor you. All of us want to honor you. All of us want to be, oh God, that salt and light. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, remove fear, remove discouragement, remove, oh God, preconceived ideas, oh God, disappointments from the past. Lord, remove all that, oh God. And Lord, just fill us, oh God, overflowing in our hearts. God, of the grace and the desire that we want to exalt you, oh God.
everywhere that we are at, O oh God. That even as we are fitted and knit together, we will continue to work at this, O oh God, to be one, even as you are one. Because only we are the ones who can answer that prayer. You have laid it out, your desire for us, O oh God. So even as we come together, and when people come even in this place, Lord, they will encounter the power of unity, the grace of unity, the amazing love of Jesus. Lord, but let us go out. Connect the disconnected to Christ that their lives will be a testimony to you. So Father, I bless your people today in the name of Jesus. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, help us to honor your name. Come and set up your kingdom so that everyone on earth will obey you as you are obeyed in heaven. Give us our food for today. Forgive us for doing wrong as we forgive others. Keep us from being tempted and protect us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you lift up your hands? And now may the God of peace who raised from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, by whose blood we have God's everlasting covenant also equip you with all that you need to do His will in every good work. God working in you what is pleasing to Him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Bless you. Call somebody that you didn't see today. Reach out to somebody who is not well. Pray for them. Connect with somebody. God bless you.
Just begin to lift up your hallelujah. 